Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Welcome to a Dirt Report, hopefully a short one because good news don't need too many words. We have an update on whether the NBN is going to be sold and privatized. And the good news is it might not be. Well, we'll soon find out what the parliament says. So I have a story for you about Labour moving to keep the NBN in public hands. Make sure to like and subscribe and let's get started for rolling the intro. David Crow from The Edge is reporting on this one. Not for sale, Labour moves to keep NBN in public hands. The National Broadband Network will be kept in public ownership under a new federal law to be put to federal parliament this week in a surprise move by the federal government to assure 8.5 million customers the service will not be privatized. Now, I am all up for this. There is no way that our communication infrastructure should be private. That is the most ridiculous thing to do from a national security point of view, but also from a <laughs> cost point of view, because as soon as you privatize it, prices will go up. And how do you think companies like Telstra, Aussie Broadband and TPG are going to feel that they're now having to deal with a private company who's all about making return on investment for their shareholders? Well, let's continue reading. The law will force a debate in Parliament on the fate of the NBN and challenge the coalition to say whether it would try to sell the Mammoth Network after taxpayers funded the $51 billion project over more than a decade. Why should our taxpayer money now go to a private company after spending so much on it? And we're only just getting to the end of actually getting fiber to the premises across all of Australia. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese will take the plan to the Labor caucus meeting on Tuesday, wanting to clear the way for the bill to be put to Parliament on Wednesday, said sources familiar with the matter who spoke anonymously to discuss party deliberations. And of course, We've talked about this before. There's been a massive fear that the NBN was going to be sold and putting in a law to block that is probably the best way to keep it that way, even if governments change. Now, in the past, I did a bit of research about which party, whether it be the Liberals or the Labour, tended to sell publicly owned uh, utilities. And I found that both companies about 20 to 50 years ago tended to sell public infrastructure willy-nilly and privatizing it all the time to reduce their debt. But it's been labor in the last 15 to 20 years who has turned the corner and has started to bring a lot of those things back. So things like obviously power companies becoming uh, privatized was a bad thing. All the prior prices have gone up, but places like Queensland have taken steps to eliminate that and bring it back into public hands. So this will be very interesting. Let's continue. The move will heighten a dispute over the future of the NBN and the impact on broadband prices after years of concern that selling the network would reshape competition, especially if Telstra emerges as the leading bidder. Now imagine that Telstra sold off a lot of their pits to the NBN at very high prices and then made a killing off that and now they're like well now that it's done and it's all ready to go why don't we buy it back which is absolutely ridiculous basically telstra gets a free run coalition communication spokesman david coleman has blamed the government for letting the nbn increase its prices this year setting up an election fight over broadband as part of the wider political dispute over the cost of living in putting this draft law to parliament labor will lay the ground for a political attack on opposition leader peter dutton if he leaves any room for the privatization of the nbn at some point in the future now we do know the history that the liberal government decided to do the multi-technology mix instead of going straight to fiber which basically cost double the amount so that 51 billion is kind of a bit of a mistake it should have been at around probably 30 billion maybe with some you know up and downs there 35 but not 51 now in regards to nbn it does make money its revenues increased by 4.4 percent to 5.5 billion but it still posted a net loss of 1.4 billion uh, though compared to 1.1 billion the year before but we are in the process of upgrading which is the most costly process after all the upgrades are gone the maintenance cost will be much lower and that revenue will be much better 
placed to actually bring money to the government, which they kind of need at the moment. Uh, Albanese went into the last election with a promise to keep the network in public hands, but the policy was never put into law. So I guess this is last hurrah to make that happen. Now, Communications Minister Michelle Rowland wrote to the NBN co-chair Kate McKenzie in July 2022 to set out the incoming government's expectations for the network. She said the government has stated that it will retain NBN Co. in public ownership for the foreseeable future, expand full five access to more homes and businesses, and ensure NBN delivers for customers and facilitates productivity. Now, lastly, this comment is very interesting from uh, Coleman. He says, what the government, I think, wants to do is push people up on the higher cost plans or higher speed plans so they can say they've increased the speed of the NBN, but the people who are actually paying for it are the majority of families. And that is actually a kind of fair point because what NBN has been doing is not so much pushing the people to pay more, it's pushing the RSPs to buy higher plans for their customers to get more bandwidth so they don't pay overages. And so what happens is you end up potentially charging a similar amount to a 100 down plan for a 50 plan and that person only can get 50 because they're fiber to the node or something like that and they've got copper for the rest of the way and they're getting very slow speeds but you know, the RSB had to buy the 100 down plan from NBN to provide enough bandwidth for everyone else who is using higher speeds on their network. So it's definitely the NBN's fault for forcing these weird price increases and these fake ways of getting people to upgrade to higher speeds. And, you know, the other side of it is actually some people still can't get those higher speeds. So there's that. Is it a problem with the price increases? Yes, the prices have gone up and they'll continue going up, which means RSPs will put up their prices and $90 to $100 for very average internet is way too expensive. So friends, let me know what you think below. Is this a good sign? I think it is a good sign. Obviously, NBN staying in public hands is best for all the people, that 8.5 million customers. And of course, going forward, all the upgrades and maintenance being maintained by a public entity, at least stuff will get done instead of just being left to rot, just to bleed it dry and make as much return on investment to all the shareholders. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this Dirt Report. I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.